Welcome my lords, it's your boy King David back with another video. This video is going to be the Mount Fuji special. It's going to talk about my experiences uh, hiking up Mount Fuji. And joining me this evening is my boy James. Why do I call him James? Because Metapod knows the move Harden. James Harden. <laughs> okay, whatever. Stick around to the end of this video to find out whether or not I recommend you take this excursion. Some, some foreshadowing right there. Uh, is that foreshadowing? I don't know what you call it. A, a hook? A teaser? Cliffhanger? Anyway, yeah, Mount Fuji. It's a mountain. NANI? <laughs> Mount Fuji is a mountain in Japan. For those of you who don't know, it's about, uh, how high is it? Hey Siri, how tall is Mount Fuji? Mount Fuji is 3,776 meters above sea level. Hey Siri. Thanks, boo. All right, that just tells you how high the mountain is. Super high. Let's start from the beginning of the trip. Me living in Osaka right now, uh, I along with some other friends, we took a bus all the way to Mount Fuji. And for those of you who don't know, Mount Fuji is very far away from Osaka. A 10 hour bus ride to be exact. And it's not too bad in that every two hours or so we take a break at a rest stop, but 10 hours is 10 hours, right? We departed around 9 a.m. from Osaka uh, we got to the mountain eventually at maybe 6 p.m. because of traffic and everything as well. After getting to the mountain finally, uh, after changing and getting our gear ready and doing some warm-up exercises, uh, we managed to start hiking up the trail at around 7 p.m. I want to say. We started on the basic trail, which is a trail that most people take. It is called the Yoshida Trail. It starts around, I think, the fifth station. So what the station means is that uh, every point on the mountain, uh, at a certain elevations, at certain points, there's going to be rest stops. Anyway, we started at the fifth station, which was around the halfway point, right? According to research, uh, apparently the fifth station is already 2,300 meters or so above sea level. It's about like one kilometer, right? One point something kilometers. So you have to hike. And you might think, oh, that's not too bad. It's not too bad. Well, what's wrong with that? It's pretty hard, let me tell you. No joke. It's a very pleasant hike at the beginning, don't get me wrong. Uh, you can see an incredible view of all these mountains and trees and rocks and stuff. And you get to a point where there's almost no trees. And it's just rocks and rocks and rocks. Uh, thing about Fuji that if you go, you're gonna notice that it is just very monotonous. It is very tedious. What do I mean by that? There are points where like you hike up the mountain and you're going not straight up. No, 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 you're going zigzag, like right and left and right and left and right and left and right and left. And this continues on for, I'd say like a good couple of hours too. And also considering the fact that uh, when we went, uh, which is you know the beginning of August, a ton of people on the mountain walking up the same trail you are and it's just people. Yes! It's hard to go at the pace you want to because there are so many people. So my friends and I, we reserved our lodging at the third, eighth station, something, one of the eight stations. We found ourselves saying so many times like, oh, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? We had to take breaks along the way. This is very tiring, right? It's just like walking up stairs that are going left and right, upwards, just for a couple of hours, for hours and hours. There are some parts where you also have to like climb up rocks too with your bare hands. Making it even more difficult was the fact that we were hiking at night because we wanted to catch the sunrise because it gets dark real quick. Uh, what was also interesting though was we were able to see fireworks all in the distance. We were seeing fireworks from above, which is really weird, right, if you think about it. Because uh, usually you see fireworks you know, from the bottom and you see it in the sky. No, we were looking down on the fireworks. That was really interesting. Apparently that was rare even for the tour guide. By the way, I also want to say, being a tour guide for the mountain, it must really incredibly suck because they were hiking up the mountain too along with us. You'd assume they would just take us to the mountain and be like, no, you know, I'm just going to chill here. No, they were hiking up the mountain along with us. And the fact that they had to, especially the people coming from Osaka, they have to ride the bus for 10 hours uh, with everybody and, you know, back and forth. And they have to hike the mountain up to guide the people. They have to do that probably, what, how many times? It's crazy to think about. And where were we? Lights, right. Having a headlight, that's the major key, DJ Khaled style. Barely any lighting. The only lighting you'll get, aside from the headlights and or flashlights from other people, is the lights from the stations, which is very scarce to begin with. And what is even 
it's like so just discouraging uh, is the fact that the lights of stations seem so far away up. Like just when you're going up to, for example, like from the fifth to the sixth station, and then you're resting, you're like, oh, you're like it can't be too bad, right? Then you see like the lights of the next station, but it's like so high up there. That we got to our lodging finally, hiked up the mountain I said earlier, uh, starting at 7 p.m. And we finally got there at midnight. At midnight, five hours it took for us to climb. And we really only got maybe 50 minutes, if that, to just lie down and rest. What do you guys recommend from the last eighth station to get to the summit, you should start maybe at 1.30. Uh, and so we were thinking, hey, let's beat the crowd and let's start up at one. Let's rest at the eighth station for about maybe 30 or 40 minutes or so, and then let's start hiking up. Uh, needless to say, that's what everyone was thinking. In hindsight, we should have just hiked up straight. Uh, you know, maybe just rested at our lodging for a little bit and then hiked up um, just from the get-go. When we were getting towards the end, it is just a line of people. It, we were, there were so many people, it was getting ridiculous to the point where we were at a complete stop. We wanted to catch the sunrise, which was around 4.30 a.m. There was like no way at this rate that we would have gone up there. Also, another thing to note, if you're going with a party of multiple people, uh, expect that you guys might get split up because you know you and your friends are going at different speeds and also the fact that there might be so many people uh, pushing and just trying to get past each other. That's what happened with my party. We were a party of 10 people. I ended up <laughs> hiking up to the summit by myself and only to meet my friends there. A couple of my friends there. There was some other of my friends that were still like at around the ninth station. Uh, around sunrise time. The thing you have to be careful about is altitude sickness. I thought it was a myth. I was like, oh, how bad could it be? Oh, let me tell you something, boo. It is a very real thing. Altitude sickness is for real. What does altitude sickness feel like? Uh, let's say, so when you're hiking up the mountain, I want to say around the seventh or eighth station, I got lightheaded. Uh, I got even more fatigued. I kind of felt shortness of breath. I felt very sleepy. It was to the point where we were so close to the summit. I want to say maybe an hour away from the summit. I wanted to just give up, quit, and just sleep right there. Just lie on the rocks and sleep. And that would have been bad because I would have probably gotten hypothermia if I gave up. And you, it was crazy how you saw all these different people just lying on the ground sleeping, them feeling the altitude sickness too. Going to see all these people inhale these canned oxygen. I mentioned hypothermia earlier. The cold is very real too. Uh, <clears throat> I think the forecast was around minus two degrees Celsius around the top. It felt a lot colder than that. Even when I brought like a down jacket with padding, I was still pretty cold. It's crazy to think about how like, it's summer. It's summer and it's cold. Like, well, what is that? I thought it was going to be chilly at best, but then it was pretty cold. I underestimated it. I underestimated a lot about this mountain. So when I was close to the point of giving up, then I see the sky brighten up. And then that right there was a cue like, oh shoot, I gotta hurry up. and. I want to say there was about maybe at that point 30 more minutes of climbing. You're climbing Mount Fuji and you see a row of red lights, that's going to indicate to you that's the summit. It seemed so far away, but then I was like, no, I am determined to get this. And even these young people, they're like, Akira and I, like, don't give up. And they're just like, dudes just like trying to run up the mountain as fast as they could. Me too, I had to like get my climbing mode on and just get into gear and climb up the mountain using my hands and my feet and whatnot. And finally, after so much climbing, after hours and hours of climbing, at around 4.30, I finally reached the summit. The sunrise, I mean, it's beautiful, don't get me wrong. Very beautiful from the top too, but I think more than that was the fact, just the suffering that it took, the hours and hours of suffering that it took for me to reach the top finally. That's what got me very emotional when I saw the sunrise. I cried, I cried, King David cried. The sunrise, man, it was one of the most beautiful things I saw. I Maybe it was also because <laughs> Mount Fuji, the climb itself, was one of the hardest things I've experienced too. Um, yeah, I guess it was the agony made the sweetness more sweet, if that makes any sense. After viewing the sunrise more and meeting up with some of my friends, another half of my friends were still climbing up the mountain as we were talking. Uh, they didn't even reach the summit yet at that point. We realized we still needed to go down. That was around a four and a half hour trip going down. That's what the estimated time was. And 
Uh, again, I remind you that we got to the summit at around 4.30 a.m. for the sunrise, and we had to be back on the bottom to catch our bus at 10 a.m. We had to get down stat, especially as other people were going down the mountain too. But going up was hard, going down was pretty difficult too. Why? It's because, you know how I mentioned how it was very tedious going up Mount Fuji, left and right, left and right, same thing on the bottom, going down going left and right and left and right, making matters worse, it's a decline, but it's also sand and little tiny pebbles, and so sometimes the rocks and the sand get in your feet, sometimes you slip, and so I recommend getting gaiters, goiters, you, whatever the guards thing you get to cover your, uh, your leg, your shin, to prevent things from going in your shoe, highly recommend that too. Even wearing those, rocks still got in my shoe, and so I can't imagine what it would have happened if I didn't have it, and I would probably would have stopped multiple times to get rocks out of my shoe. By the way, uh, when talking about shoes, hiking shoes or hiking boots are an absolute necessity as well. I saw these people with just regular running shoes, and like they, I saw them just multiple times just stopping to get rocks out of their shoe. And I'm like, dude, you brought that on yourself. Are you insane? Why would you hike up Mount Fuji and also hike down with just regular shoes? Unless you're just willing to cope with like a broken ankle or something or just getting your shoes completely torn up. If you're okay with that, then by all means, wear shoes. If you're okay with rocks getting in your shoe all the time, bring tennis shoes. So I saw someone take that to the next level. I saw a kid, you know what he was wearing? He, he was wearing Timberland boots, like Tim's. What? Things you, you, I think you would just wear it for fashion most of the time. And to hike up Mount Fuji, hiking up those rocks, hiking, just, I, I, my mind was blown. So, uh, hiking down the mountain. It's a zigzag, 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 zigzag. And you see the same view. It's the same clouds view you see. It's the same mountains you see. It, nothing really changes. Other than the fact that when you're going one way, when you're going down one way, it's like, oh, we gotta turn left and do the same thing over and over and over again. And um, there's a part where you're going to intersect with the path that's going up around the ninth or eighth stations. I highly recommend go to the bathroom at that point. Go to the bathroom at that point because there's not going to be another bathroom until maybe around the sixth station or so so if you had to go to the bathroom you're pretty boned to say the least like in the middle of it in the middle of going down and the thing is like there's really nowhere to go to the bathroom in the where the, in the vicinity of like no people because wherever you go in the mountain there's probably going to be someone that's able to see you so i recommend Go to the bathroom as many times as possible. You go up to Mount Fuji, the weird thing is you have to pay money to use the bathroom. It's about, I think every bathroom, every time you use it, it's 200 yen. Uh, but if you manage to stay at your station, uh, you can, after you pay the 200 yen, you can go as many times as you want at your station, that you're, at your lodging, of course. And also, uh, it's a squatty potty too. So if you, if you have to go number two, then it's a pretty big problem. I don't know how people manage to do it. Like there's nowhere for you to grab. I've never used a squatty potty before. So when I had to go, there was nowhere for me to grab onto site to like hold the walls and stuff to prevent myself from falling. Yeah, it's really a comfortable thing to do when you've never done it before. So after hours and hours of hiking up and hiking down, the good thing about going down is it takes half the time, four hours uh, going down. The time-wise, it's not too bad. It's just, again, the sand and the rocks make it even more excruciating. And the fact that we didn't get any sleep at all, almost maybe like 30 minute nap, like a 30 minute period of just shutting my eyes. Finally, make it to the bottom of the mountain. Finally make my bus. I just felt so dirty, so tired. So that was my overall experience of hiking Mount Fuji from beginning to end. So after being done with Fuji, how do I feel about it? Let me give you a saying, uh, translated from Japanese. Something along the lines of, if you've never hiked up Mount Fuji even once, you're a fool. But if you hike it up again, you're a fool as well. <laughs> and that just sums it up so perfectly. Like I. Do I recommend going up Mount Fuji? Absolutely yes. But <laughs> I think the biggest reason why you should is not just because of the beautiful sunrise, but to say that, hey, I managed to hike up this ridiculously long famous mountain, this world-renowned mountain, world heritage mountain, just to have something to brag to your friends that, hey, I did this cool thing. How about you? Did I do it again? Heck no. You must be out of your mind. I'm not gonna do that again. 
never doing that again. I never want to hike up a mountain ever again either. Even if you paid me a thousand bucks to hike a Mount Fuji, I would not do it again. That's how badly I don't want to do it. I don't know. I recommend you do hike up Mount Fuji, but here's what I would do. Here's some pro tips, my lords. Uh, number one, bring these essential items. Layers of clothing, especially a jacket, because as I shared earlier, it gets pretty cold towards the top of the mountain, and you're gonna need layers that you can easily put on and easily put off. I recommend getting like uh, tight body Under Armour shirts, uh, some long sleeve dry fit shirts, uh, just layers and layers of clothing. To prepare a headlight, because that's gonna be key for seeing in the dark. Goiters or gaiters, whatever you call it, I still don't know the pronunciation of it. The things that prevent rocks from getting into your shoe, you're gonna need that for when you go down the mountain. Um, bring food, bring snacks, bring, uh, people said on Reddit, uh, a day's worth of food. And I felt like, yeah, that's pretty true. You're gonna need that. Uh, you're gonna also need plenty of water too. If you're planning on watching the sunrise, don't do what I did. Don't try to hike up the mountain in one night. Take time, plan your trip out over the course of multiple days. So for example, if you're planning on going on a Saturday, uh, don't start hiking up the mountain Saturday evening. Start hiking up Saturday morning, and that gives you maybe five or six hours or so to get to your lodging and you know rest. Rest as much as you can, and then uh, when it comes you know, Sunday night, then you can just start hiking up the mountain after resting for a significant amount of time. You won't have to do what I did and pull an all-nighter and just go without any sleep at all. It was like a big reason why the trip sucked, was just the lack of time to rest. <sighs> it hurts me. With those things in mind, I recommend Mount Fuji, in all seriousness, because it's like one of the most beautiful sights you're going to see when you reach the summit. Another thing is like, uh, I wouldn't try to predict the weather on the towards the summit of the mountain because they say the weather around the top is so unpredictable. We were very fortunate to see the sunrise and there weren't that many clouds either, uh, but apparently like there's a couple of times where there's a typhoon or there's like a storm happening, so much so to the point where uh, the staff, they prevent you from going to the summit and they say, oh, you can't go up, you gotta go down, sorry. Before you hike up the mountain, pray. <laughs> Pray that the weather will be nice. Yeah, plan ahead. Be smart. Don't be dumb. Like me. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video, everyone. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you like videos like this, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. Feel free to share in the comment section down below if you've ever hiked Mount Fuji. What was your experience like? Or if not, has there been anything else you've done in your life that was super difficult or super hard that you never want to do again? If you haven't checked out my other videos on this channel, go ahead and do that as well. So yeah. That's Mount Fuji. Fuji, Fuji out. Know what I mean?